with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. For your health's sake, enjoy a big bowl full of cereal and milk every morning. Quick to prepare, economical to serve, and delicious to eat. It's nature's winning combination for flavor and nutrition. Every serving of cereal and milk gives you essential vitamins, minerals, and quickly available food energy. Every serving gives you the delicious flavor of your favorite cereal and the cool refreshment of fresh whole milk. Yes, cereal and milk are natural partners working for you. So put them to work on your breakfast table every morning. It's the energy way to start the day. Niacin, iron, thiamine, protein, calcium, all the vital nutrients you need for work or play are to be found in one ounce of good grain cereal and one half cup of milk. So remember cereal and milk when you plan breakfast. Make them an important part of every breakfast you serve. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? The Lone Ranger and Toto were traveling west along an old Spanish trail, which had been blazed across the southern part of the United States during the 16th century. Oh, come the sunny cactus-studded trail brought them to the outskirts of El Paso. There they separated. The masked man headed for a campsite they had used many times before, while Toto rode on to town to buy supplies. When the Indian joined his masked friend, he had several newspapers as well as provisions. After a light supper, the Lone Ranger read the papers. As he turned the pages of the Greenville Bugle, the name of an old friend caught his eye. Toto... Hey, this newspaper article, Sheriff Bill Whitcomb is seriously ill. That's plenty bad. Him sheriff of Greenville, long time. Let me see, yes, 15 years next month. I heard a lot about him before we met him. Nearly five years ago, we helped him round up crooks who break out of prison near Greenville. Yes, there's been little crime in Greenville since then. Well, when Bill Whitcomb runs sheriff's office, it's good town for crooks to stay away from he and his brother Tom have done a lot to make it prosperous. Not remember Tom with them. He organized the Greenville Bank. Oh. We'll uh, stay here tonight, Tom, the rest of the horses. In the morning, we'll start for Greenville. Greenville. Two days' travel from here. By the time we arrive, I hope Bill Whitcomb's completely recovered. <laughs> Lone Ranger's hope for the sheriff's recovery was not to be realized. Bill Whitcomb had contracted a severe case of pneumonia, and in spite of the local doctor's best efforts to save him, he died that day. Hours after his death, Buck Beaters, the owner of the King of Spades Cafe, held a conference in his office. Expert gunslingers and drifting cowhands named Mohawk, Elk, Toby, and Yuma help themselves to the box of fine cigars the tall lantern-jawed cafe owner offered them. As he held a match to a fragrant Havana, Mohawk eyed Buff Beater shrewdly. What's the idea, Bob? Hmm? You've never been so open-handed with drinks and cigars before. I haven't had anything to celebrate for the last 15 years. What are you celebrating now? Sheriff Whitcomb's death. Sheriff's death? Uh, 
lot of folks in town are downright sorry he's dead. I'm not one of them. This town was wide open before he took over the sheriff's office. That's right. A fellow could get away with anything, short of murder. Things are sure quiet as down. Thanks to Whitcomb. No thanks to him for my money. With Whitcomb dead, there's no law in Greenville anyway. There will be inside of 24 hours. How do you Uh figure that? Whitcomb's chief deputy quit a month ago to go back east. The sheriff got sick before he had a chance to hire anybody else. Tom Whitcomb and the rest of the leading citizens in town are planning to hold a special election this afternoon to elect a new sheriff. Special yeah, election. I thought Tom Whitcomb might take over the job. Maybe he'll be elected to. No, he doesn't want it. He's got enough to do running the bank. Who do you think will get the election? I don't know, and I don't care. But there's one thing sure. Uh-huh. What's that? Whoever wins the election will have a lot to learn about this. Yeah, right. You will. I figure it'll take him at least a month to learn the rope. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I have a few plans that won't make the job any easier for him. Throw in with me and we'll all get rich quick. Oh. We'll start by robbing the bank. Then we'll rob the rest of the places in town with cash enough to make it worthwhile. So that's your scheme. It's a good one, too. By striking fast, we'll be able to get away with a fortune before the new sheriff knows what's happening. Maybe so. Maybe nothing. It's a sure thing. If you're not willing to go along with me, say so. We'll never have another chance as good as this one. That's right. I'll go along with you, Buck. I figured I could count on you, Mohawk. Now, what about you three? Been a long time since I've had any easy money. If there's no risk, count me in. <laughs> yeah, me too. You with us, Yuma? Yeah. Good. And we're all set. I'll see that we go into action. The night after the election, we'll wait till the town's quieted down. Then, head for the bank. By 11 o'clock that night, the election was over and the ballots counted. Pete Quinn, the editor of the Greenville Bugle, was elected sheriff. He was promptly sworn in, and Buck Leaders was one of the first to congratulate him. Well, you make a first-rate sheriff, Pete. Thanks, Buck. I'll do my best anyway. I I know you are. Leaving the sheriff's office, Pete Quinn went directly to the comfortable house Tom Whitcomb had shared with his brother Bill. Tom, I don't know why I was elected, but you're handy with a gun. You're young, healthy, and smart. If I can run the sheriff's office half as well as Bill did, I'd be mighty glad you're taking over. Big job. I have a lot to learn. Yeah, everyone in town will do everything possible to help you. I'll need plenty of help. I'll run along. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Tom. Good night, Pete. Three o'clock that night, the streets were deserted. Buck Leaders opened the back door of his darkened cafe. Mohawk, Elk, Toby, and Yuma followed him to a rear window in the bank. I brought along an iron bar so that we'll have no trouble forcing the lock. Yeah, hey, okay. Are you sure you'll be able to open the safe? Well, I'm a little out of practice. If I don't have to work too fast, I'll manage. Here we are. Down. Takes care of the lock. Now the window. Yuma, you stand guard out here just to make sure no one takes us by surprise. All right. The rest of us will go inside. Come on. Right with you. (laughs) After taking all the currency and gold in the safe, Buff and his friends left the bank. They hurried to a nearby cottonwood grove where the far-sighted cafe owner had horses waiting. Another half hour, it'll be daylight. She took long enough to open the safe. Oh, what are you complaining about? I got it open, didn't I? Hit the saddle, boy. <laughs> head for our glass trick in the hill. We'll hide our tracks in the trick, then head back to town one at a time. Come on. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Late the following night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached Greenville. They didn't know that their friend, Sheriff Bill Whitcomb, had been buried that afternoon. And they knew nothing of the robbery that had occurred the night before. Riding slowly through the dark streets, the masked man kept his steps in low over his eyes to conceal his mask. As they neared the Whitcomb house, they passed several townsmen who eyed them suspiciously. Me not think... 
we meet so many fellas. Neither did I, Toto. I hope none of them noticed my mask. A shadow from hat brim, hide mask. But fellas look plenty suspicious. Then keep hands close to guns. Well, here's the Whitcomb house. Those are the... Who's gone? Easy, oh, easy, easy, scout. Easy, fellas. Me, wait here with horses, Kim Asante. All right, Toto. Right. I'll knock on the kitchen door. Just a minute, strangers. I want to talk to you, too. You have gun in hand. He's covering us. Just keep your hands away from your holsters while I... Great Caesar's ghost, you... Your mask. Hidden cover, Pete. Don't let him get away. I noticed those two riding in the town. All right, stand back, boys. I've got the drop on him. What's the idea of holding guns on us? We not do wrong. Till the moonlight struck your face, I thought you might be two strangers. But that mask... You're wearing a sheriff's badge. That's right. I'm the law in this town. What about Sheriff Whitcomb? We buried him this afternoon. Bill Whitcomb is dead? Don't act dumb, mister. You and your pal knew he was dead. That's why you figured you could get away with that bank robbery last night. And the express office robbery early this evening. Sheriff Whitcomb was a friend. I, I'm sorry to learn of his death. He's stolen for time, Pete. We'll help you disarm them. Come on, boys. Close in on the masked man and redskin. We'll show him we still got law and order yeah. in this town. Oh, now, now, oh, keep oh, back, boys. I'll handle this. We'll take over. We'll hang the scum. Oh, 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 We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now, there's something new and amazing right on the Cheerios package. A picture that actually moves. Look for the Magic Wiggle picture, free on specially marked Cheerios packages. You've never seen anything like it. Just pick up the box and your Wiggle picture springs to lifelike action. It actually moves. And there are six different Wiggle Pictures in all, one on every Cheerios package. Pegleg the Pirate opens his treasure chest. Freddy the Fiddler plays his violin. Leopold Lion roars at a bird. Flipper the Seal balances a ball. Reginald Rabbit eats a carrot. And Happy Watha the Indian paddles his own canoe. Yes, they all move. And they're all in full color, made of sturdy plastic. So get all six magic Wiggle Pictures. Amaze your friends with their lifelike action. Use them in dozens of ways, as hair clips, bookmarks, and badges. Magic Wiggle Pictures, now free on every specially marked package of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power. to continue. As the angry Tomsman closed in on the Lone Ranger and Tonto, Pete Quinn did his best to calm them. Then suddenly the kitchen door of the Whitcomb house opened. Tom Whitcomb stood in the opening holding a shotgun. Let go of that mask, man! Tom, give me a hand. This crowd glints crazy. Get back, all of you. You'll stop bus shots. You heard Tom. I'm back in his place. You're siding with a masked crook. We thought you were an honest chair. Yeah. He is honest, and so is the last man. He's the Lone Ranger. What? His Indian friend is named Tonto. The Lone Ranger. That's right. Well, I'll be... Ju- you gents hear that? And you jugheads would have lynched him. Now, clear out of here. Go back to your home. All right. Come on, boys. Well, now that the crowd's dispersing, come inside, mister. I have a lot to tell you. Very well, Tom. Uh, you come in, too, Pete. Thanks. Now, me stay out here, Chief of Bobby. Watch the cow from Silver. Thanks, Tonto. I didn't know about Bill when I came here, Tom. Tonto and I hoped to see him. Now, he was sick just about a week when he died. I'm sorry. Yeah, everyone in town feels that way, mister. We miss him. When we were outside, you said something about a robbery, Sheriff. Yeah. Crooks robbed the bank last night. He got away with $2,000 worth of gold and $30,000 in cash. Tonight, two fellas broke into the Wells Fargo office, and they got $5,000. I thought you were still out with the posse looking for him, Pete. Well, I got back to town 20 minutes ago. Did you lose their trail? Yeah. The posse spread out in the hills to try to pick up their tracks. It's almost like a crime wave hit town. As soon as crooks found out Bill was dead, they cut loose. When did Bill die? Uh, yesterday afternoon. And last night, sometime between midnight and daybreak, the bank was robbed. News traveled rapidly, but not that rapidly. What do you mean? Bill's death couldn't have anything to do with these robberies. I think it has everything to do with them. 
crooks know I'm new in office. How long will it take word of Bill Whitcomb's death to reach nearby towns? Oh, a day or so. I see what you're driving at, mister. There hasn't been time enough for the news to get around. I'd like to go to the Wells Fargo office to examine the tracks you found. Come on, I'll show them to you. I'm coming with you. I don't know if you'll be able to do a better job of trailing than we did, mister. But I sure hope so. My Indian friend Tonto will be able to help us. We're heading for the Wells Fargo office, Tonto. How about coming with us? Hey, gunshots. Sound like gunshot fire down that way. Come on, we'll see what happens. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger, Tom Whitcomb, Sheriff Pete Quinn, and Tonto reached the open doorway of Hank Murphy's general store. Though wounded in the shoulder, the big red-faced Irishman leaned against the door frame, watching a Colt 45 he could no longer fire. Oh. Easy, easy, Hank. Dirty, even Spurpeen. With any luck at all, I'd have killed him. Instead of just wounded him. What happened, Hank? Well, with the bank rob last night... The Wells Fargo office broken into it tonight. I figured I'd better stand watch in the store. Well, oh, steady. Uh, come inside and sit down. Uh, oh, oh. I, I'm all right. I... Great land of Goshen. There's a mask owl who... This right. man is the Lone Ranger. A Lone Ranger? What about the man you shot? Sure, my bullet hit him in the leg. I, I was trying to bring him down when he shot me. We'll go after him. You tracks the fellow who found him, sorry. Him pick himself up. Try to run. We'll follow those tracks. You want a lantern? The moonlight's bright enough. Come on, fellow. I'll get a doctor for Hank. I'm with you, mister. This is one coyote who won't get away from us. At that moment, Toby, the wounded thief, reached the locked door leading from the alley to Buck Leader's office in the cafe. He rattled the knob and pounded on the door. Buck! Buck, let me in! Buff! Hurry, Buff! What's the idea? Put you him long enough to open the door. Close it quick. What happened to him? I stopped the bullet. I can see I'll that. I'll kill Hank Murphy for it, too. What? Uh, I'll sit down. I've got to get a doctor. If I'd known you were mixed up in the gunplay, I'd How'd I know that trigger happy Irishman would be sitting in his store in the dark waiting for trouble? As soon as I tried to force the lock on the back door of his place, he snatched it open from the inside and let me have it. Too bad he didn't kill you. What? I told you and the rest of the boys to pull no jobs unless I ordered them. But I... How can Juma got away with robbing the Wells Fargo office just like I told them yeah. to? Then they headed for the hills. They'll be back any minute. You and Mohawk were to wait till midnight before robbing the gambling halls down the street. Well, I... Hey, someone's at the door. At the door to the cafe. Huh? Oh, it's Mohawk. A good thing for you it is. But my foot, I'm hurt. Ah, shut up. Hey, Buff, I... Toby, what's your trouble? Oh, we got smart and stopped and led. So that's what brought the sheriff and the redskin here, huh? The sheriff? Where is he? He just came into the cafe with an engine. He looks like he's geared for trouble. So I figured I'd better let you know. You let him here, Toby. I didn't mean to, Buff. I was hurt. I'll deal with you later. But I didn't know where else to go. Two cents, I'd kill you now and get it over with. Kill me? Why, you... Don't reach for that gun, you double-crossing tinhorn. I'm a lot faster than you are. Ah, now, wait a minute, Bob. You're what? covered. So keep your hands away from that holster. Get his gun, Mohawk. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Toby. What's the idea of taking my gun? You know what, Buff? Keep him covered and get him out of here. Take him away from town. I'll get him out of town if I can. You better get him out or we're all in trouble. As soon as you're far enough away, take care of him. Huh? I got no use for a man who can't take orders. The sheriff. You make a sound and you'll stop a bullet. Open the door, Pop. I want to talk to you. Sure, sure thing, Sheriff. Just a minute. Out the back way, Mohawk. You better unlock the door so I can keep Toby covered. All right, all right, but we got to work fast. Open this door, Pop, or I'll shoot the lock off. Just a minute, Sheriff. There, now clear out, Mohawk. Pop! Pop, open this door! All right, Sheriff, I'm coming! Toby, move. I'm not going anywhere. You'll kill me. You heard Buff. Get on. You're not going anywhere. Hey, what? The mess, man. Save me. Help me. As the Lone Ranger stepped from the shadows holding his gun, Toby dropped to his knees in the open doorway. (laughs) Mohawk fired at the newcomer, but he was an instant too late. His shot went wild as a silver bullet smashed his gun. Out of my way, Toby. In the office, Buff reached for the gun he had holstered to unlock the door. No. The masked man's coat roared again. Just take the door down. 
Buck fell back with a bullet in the arm as Pete Quinn and Toto threw their weight against the office door. I'm hurt! Don't shoot! Half sobbing with fear, Toby pleaded for his life as the last man stepped to the doorway. Don't kill me, please, mister! Mohawk and Buff were gonna kill me! You two are covered, so don't try a fast move. Well, mister, you've got everything under control. They were gonna kill me! Toby! You're wounded in the leg. Why? So I... you're the one Hank Murphy shot. That's right, Pete. Mohawk and I were going to turn him over to the law. You dirty lion double-crosser, you were going to kill me. You're lying. You can't get away with this, Buff. I'll tell everything I know. And who'll believe a thief? I'll back every word I say. Buff's the fellow you want, Pete. He got the idea of robbing the bank, and he sent Elk and Yuma to rob the Wells Fargo office tonight. That's another lie. The bank money's locked in your desk. What's more, Elk and Yuma will be back here any minute with a Wells Fargo cash. They'll knock on the back door three times. It's a signal. That's not true. I'll know whether it is or not after I've searched your desk. I'll keep these men covered, Toto, while you take care of their wounds. Uh A few minutes later, the sheriff found the money stolen from the bank in Buff's desk. Then, as soon as the prisoner's wounds had been bandaged, Pete and Toto took them to jail. Five minutes later, the Lone Ranger came to the jail with Elk and Yuma. Tom Whitcomb was with the masked man. Inside, you two. The cell's waiting for you. So you got him. Yes, they knocked on the back door of the cafe a few minutes after you and Paulo left, Pete. By that time, I was with the masked man. We got them both. And here's the Wells Fargo cash. That's all we need. Come on, Elk, you two, Yuma. Come on, inside. I think this will end your trouble, Pete. I'm much obliged to you and Tonto, mister. We may see you again. We'll go back to your place, Tom, to get our horses. You're fine. Good luck in your new job, Pete. Thanks, mister. Adios. Adios, Sheriff. So long, and thanks again. I'll see you later, Pete. I still don't, Savvy. What happened? <laughs> I can tell you in mighty few words what happened, Elk. You and your pals just met the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.